So what is this about? Let me begin with an observation. Science converges, religions diverge. What do I mean by that? Well, you go to Italy, Iran, or India, and you ask a chemist or a physicist or a biologist what's going to happen if you do a certain thing, perform a certain experiment, and you get the same answer. Science has converged to what appears to be objective truth. We use science and engineering to build airplanes, and the airplanes fly. Science works. Religion diverges. Go to Italy, Iran, and India, and ask a religious leader what happens if you die. You'll get different answers. I've lived in the United States all my life, and here Christianity is a, a dominant religion. And even in Christianity, once upon a time there was Christianity. In 1054, that split into Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. The Protestant uh, Reformation came a few centuries later. There's been uh, Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses, and I, I read once that there were 200 different Christian groups in the United States. Religion diverges. Ask a Roman Catholic, a Baptist, a Mormon, how to get into heaven, and you'll get three different answers. So, it appears that religion does not find objective truth. At least it's not, does not converge to an objective truth. Religions have different opinions, different teachings. Maybe one of them is right, but when they contradict each other, both of them can't be right. At least one of them has to be wrong. Could we somehow apply science's way of knowing, something like science's way of knowing, science's epistemological method to the questions that religion treats? Well, first of all, we can't have a scripture. Science doesn't accept the authority of a mere written word. It needs proof and verification. And if we rule out scriptures as scriptures we can accept them as books just like any other book and maybe we find truth in them but we don't give them we don't grant them a uh, supreme authority so if we do that if we refuse to grant scripture supreme authority we lose our gods gods who are persons we must have the idea is is god can be thought of as a transcendent person a person who transcends the universe our father who aren't in heaven, a person who lives in heaven. Or God can be thought of as an imminent, impersonal entity. Imminent meaning inhering in the universe, being within the very ground of existence. The idea that God is love is vaguely like this kind of God because love itself is impersonal. It happens between persons but love itself is not a person. And it's imminent in that we feel it in this universe. It's not something out in heaven, it's something here that we can actually experience. So, if we accept something like the scientific method and we refuse to accept the authority of any scripture and we do not, well, we can accept personal gods if they exist as creatures like ourselves. But as we'll see, the philosophy I'm going to develop is a monist philosophy. There is only one ultimate reality. That ultimate reality is God, but that ultimate reality is not necessarily a person. You may think of it as Godhead, out of which personal gods flow as personifications of that Godhead. At any rate, that is what this is about in a nutshell. And one more thing. I'm more interested in the method than in the results. The idea is that early chemists, early physicists made a lot of mistakes. But they used a method that eventually corrected those mistakes and converged towards the truth. And so I'm going to present 
opinions, necessarily my own opinions, but I'm going to try to present them in the spirit of a scientific inquiry into the nature of spirit. Welcome, and I hope you enjoy.